Hey everybody, welcome to the Fire It Up with CJ show. Today we are going to be talking to Dr. Joseph Cordello and we're talking about his book, The 12 Rules of Attention, How to Avoid Screw-Ups, Be Free of Headspace, Do More and Be More at Work. So welcome Dr. Cordello. He is an expert in attention um, tracking and an author of several books. We all desperately need your help. Thank you for helping us. <laughs> Well, thank you for having me on. So I want to start off just broadly identifying terms because a lot of these terms are thrown around in the general public without, I think, a lot of understanding about what they mean. So we talk about awareness, mindfulness, attention, concentration, focus. What's the difference? Um, how are all these words different or similar? Yeah, we use them a lot and <clears throat> we use them in different ways because uh, we use them in so many different circumstances. Uh, let me start with, um, let me start with uh, mindfulness. Uh, mindfulness is one of these terms which I'm so happy to see on the cover of magazines, <laughs> at least a couple, a couple of times a year even, you know, right. and, and when I started seeing that, I said, well, we're all making some good progress here. Right. Uh, you know, and so a lot of times we associate the term mindfulness with being present. Mm -hmm. And, and I like that. And I think it's great. Um, and I also wanted to try to add to that to make it a little more functional, at least in my book, because we're talking about attention and focus. Um, and so when I define mindfulness, I define it as an energy. Uh, and so uh, one of the best ways I can describe what I mean when I call mindfulness and energy is, you know, on our cell phones, we all have um, uh, an adjustment for brightness mm -hmm. uh, and you can you can move you can move the brightness bar up and make things really, really sharp and bright and definitive, or you can move it down and kind of ease it up on your eyes. Um, and that's how I define mindfulness. Mindfulness is an energy that works kind of like that, mm -hmm. where right now, you know, we could we could think of something bizarre like our big toe, which mm -hmm. wasn't even in our attention until I just mentioned it. <laughs> but now it's in some people's attention and you can make that real sharp. I mean, you can think, oh, I have a big toe or you can think you can make it really sharp. You can increase the energy and say, well, I can feel my big toe mm. as opposed to my other toes, or I can feel the sock below my big toe and increase the the mindfulness even more and feel the floor below the sock, feel all three at the same time. And what we're doing is we're increasing the energy of mm -hmm. mindfulness. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so understanding it as being in the present is, is good. And then understanding that we can adjust the energy within the present moment, I think gives us another thing we can do with this great tool that we have. Uh, attention um, I'm, I'm going to talk about it, I, I believe, quite a bit here. <laughs> and so uh, I'm going to define it kind of, um, uh, kind of, uh, I'm going to give you the short version for now. Okay. So attention attention uh, is, is, is an ultra sophisticated, I kind of like to look at what's going on in our heads when we're paying attention. Um, and one of the reasons I wrote the book was to try to identify, you know, what is attention? Uh, uh, what happens to us while we're paying attention? What happens to us when we're losing attention? And how can we regain it? So those are some of the things that I was concerned about. Um, but attention itself is a network uh, it's an ultra sophisticated network in the brain that fetches information for us in a specific situation. Mm -hmm. So if, if I need to uh, dial up somebody on the phone, my attention network sets it up for me, so to speak, so that I know how to do that. It fetches the information for me so that I know how to do that. Mm -hmm. Awareness uh, in my book... <laughs> <laughs> is nothing short, it's just short, just short of magic. Um, awareness is something that, that, that we don't, we, we could practice a lot more of. And so I like to use the word preset with awareness because it, it, it presets us 
to certain dispositions, certain information, certain behaviors, uh, even certain uh, motor skills and so on. It presets us to everything that we want to do in a particular situation, awareness does. And so, for example, you know, one of the one of the things that interests me is driving, driving on mountain roads. And I live in the Berkshire Mountains, and so there's plenty of mountain roads around here. And we have a lot of hairpin turns. And the hairpin turns that we have, some of them are just amazing. They're like almost 90 degrees. Wow. And, and so way in advance, miles in advance, you start getting signs that say there's a hairpin turn coming up. And, and you can see visually that it's a really sharp turn. Um, there's a hairpin turn coming up. And then you'll, you'll see prompts like that for several miles as you approach the, the turn. By the time you get to the turn, you've already been aware of it, that it's coming up. Mm. And so you're able, you're able to spot the turn and you're able to take the turn appropriately. So what awareness does is it presets the coordinates in our heads that will be, will be the information that our attention system is going to fetch. And so as we approach the experience in reality, wherein we need that information, where we need those coordinates to trigger, awareness does two things that are almost magical. One thing that it does is we're, you know, we're always overwhelmed with information. And so we have some natural ways that, you know, we were born with to, to deal with that. One of the ways that we have to deal with that is awareness and awareness, because we're aware of certain information that we need in a certain inf- in a certain situation, as we approach that situation, we st- our, our minds start to remove the unnecessary information and they locate the necessary information much more quickly. So that's mm-hmm. one of the things that awareness does. It brings us to the important information and it gets rid of the information that we don't need, mm-hmm. the overwhelming information. And then it does one other thing that that is kind of magical. It makes it makes your mind stick to that information a little longer. Mm. Just that little bit of stickiness allows us to not pass it by. So even though we focused on it, we can still pass it by, but we stick to it because we're pre-aware that this is important, it's necessary. And by sticking to it, we might not miss it. And in some situations, it could make a big, big difference. It could Mm. just be the difference that makes all the difference. Like with a hairpin turn, if you missed it, be in Mm -hmm. big trouble. So awareness is just a great, great tool that we can use for anything like athletics um, to how we're going to behave at a business meeting uh, to how we want to wake up in the morning. Mm. Okay. And then let's talk about focus or concentration? Are they derivatives of any of these things that you've mentioned above or different? (laughs) Yeah, our attention attention is going to bring information to us. Mm -hmm. And when we focus on it, we have the ability, it doesn't mean we're going to do it, but we have the ability to go right for the information that we want. So we have the ability to zero in and say, I want this information as opposed to something else. And the other information may actually be, you know, um, louder, but we can override that and say, no, I want this. We're able to do that. Um, but if we don't regulate our attention, it's going to take care of business for us. <laughs> and, and that's, that's the issue. That's the right. big issue because up about 96% of what we do all day is done for us. <laughs> right, mean, we're on autopilot. Is that what you're running? We you are it zombie mode or autopilot. Yeah, or habitual. we're on. We're on yeah. zombie mode and autopilot 96% right. of the day, which is just great when things are working out fine. But then all of a sudden we trip up on something and it's not so great. Right. 
And it's, you know, it's because usually it's because our mind was trying to help us and it didn't recognize that we needed a different fix this time around. Great. So it's when our brain is on autopilot, what is actually happening at, in, in like a, a very high level neuroscience kind <laughs> of way? Yeah. Okay. Uh, what's happening is, all right, so let's say we're in the middle of an experience or a task, mm -hmm. whatever that is. It could be athletic. It could be any of, the, any of the things we've mentioned so far. So right in the middle of a task, what happens is our, our mind creates a mini experience, a miniature experience of the one that we're in. Mm -hmm. And we're not aware of this because it happens in milliseconds. Mm. So we're really not aware of it, but it's happening. And what happens is it sends out little scouts and, and those little scouts traverse our memories. They go through our emotions. They go through our thoughts. They go through our actions. They go through our bodily feelings, spatial feelings, all kinds of reference points that we can make to the last times we were in such an experience and mm -hmm. what we did. And so then they, they rush back and report to our attention. Yeah, it's the attention that's a fetching. It's like whoop, millisecond yep. fetching. That, okay, got that's it. That's right. They report, they report back. And at that point, a decision is made either by you or by your attentional network. And if you don't make the decision, it's going to go with what it, what it, it recognizes is our habitual pattern in such a situation. And those things are triggered for us. The right. tricky thing is, is if you asked anybody, well, did you, did you do that on purpose? We would say, of course we did. But really, all this is happening under the radar and really before we actually make that decision, unless we do. And I think I'll just bring up one experience that I think all of us, I, I, maybe all of us can relate to. I definitely experienced this embarrassingly. I remember when I had little kids, I would drive um, to pick them up at school. And then I thought, how did I even get here? <laughs> like, I don't even Absolutely, know what yeah. I was doing. I turned right, turned left. It was just, I drove down the same path every single day, just like my brain does. I mean, that's what's such a beautiful thing. It's like, I, I followed the neurocircuitry of my brain, <laughs> right, left, here, you know, this is what I, and then I'm like, oh my God, I haven't been paying attention at all while I've been driving. And I want to bring this into a war context because um, I had something that happened recently that I've been mindful of. I've been... <laughs> Um, and I'll tell you, I'll, I'll see if I can use this as demonstrating the terms that you just used and to reinforce the idea of war. But um, I, um, all of us get involved with projects. We're involved with different people helping us out. And, um, and I was with a group of people and someone had to volunteer to lead this project. And um, I noticed that I just jumped to go, okay, I'll help organize this. So all automatically, boom, autopilot, <laughs> unconsciously walked in. Did I have other things to do? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Did I overcommit myself? Absolutely. But there is just, just, you know, there is an autopilot, right? Of I'm usually the person who jumps in, gets things done, you know, bias for action. And um, I've been wondering, like, what? what why did you do this what, what and you know i can see and, and you mentioned some of these things in your book is about being conscious of the ways you know my beliefs were that oh someone has to do it um i i can add value if i were to do this so there's a lot of psychological elements and i need to add add value for me to be me you know because that's what i do is i jump in and add value right however stupid it is, that's basically the automatic pilot that came along. And then I noticed actually, um, as I was doing this, my energy started sinking down. Yeah, I started getting both aggravated. So it went up from the exhaustion of organizing people, which oddly I'm very good at doing, but I hate doing. So it's a very... <laughs> 
<laughs> it's kind of an up and down kind of scenario. So I was mindful of how completely depleted I was the other day from, you know, jumping in to do this. And um, it was interesting. My attention was focused on just getting, and even when I was doing the work, my attention was like, focus on getting the job on time in budget, right? It was just, that was the only, like, it's kind of a, it, it, it retrieved every single one of my, how are you measured by those, you know, three metrics. So I fetched all those things. <laughs> those, <laughs> and then, and then all I was aware of were those three things. And, um, and even though I'm a coach, which works, and basically most of the time I work with my clients is helping them be more um, attentive to their relationships. I, my, me, myself, I forget about all the relationships <laughs> when I'm on task. So I saw this really interesting thing happen during that experience. And I can see how all these things um, what came into play, how my attentional machinery worked and how it really worked in an unhealthy way. And so in the book, you talk about why it matters, right? I'm exhausted. I'm unhappy. Yeah. I, and when I really thought about the other day, I thought, why are you so exhausted and unhappy? And I thought, cause I hate doing organizational work. <laughs> I'm good at it, but I hate it. And I always end up being in this position, you know? So I already put like a whole bunch of, I level set like a whole bunch of information in there about what doing this kind of work means. It means I'm going to be exhausted. It means, you know, so there's a whole bunch of additional kind of baggage that was intertwined and in all that. So that's my woe is me story, which I'm hoping can be converted by talking to you. So in the next segment, I want to talk to you about how to rebuild your brain. Like how could we take this scenario, which is a very common one at work, right? You work on a project, some, you're working with a group of people because that's more and more how work is getting done. And either someone takes charge and um, runs the show or, and you're upset about it, or you're exhausted because you're running the show or something else. Okay, so let's go through that scenario in the next segment. Um, we've been talking to Dr. Joseph Cordell and we're talking about his book, The 12 Rules of Attention. So I look forward to hearing the help that you'll please offer me. <laughs> All right, thank you.